as the official in charge of internal investigations at the EPA, I am very concerned that vital information regarding suspected employee misconduct is being withheld from the OIG. Well, the watchdog over the EPA accusing officials at the agency of stonewalling its investigations. Now, this coming as we're learning that one EPA worker had been watching porn up to six hours a day at work, and it gets worse. He still has his job, and he just got a bonus. We're going to get to more misconduct in a moment, but Steve, you say the EPA is becoming a rogue agency. Yes, David, and sadly, it's not alone. They make up the rules as they go along. They're waging war on the big section of the energy industry. But you see it in other government agencies as well, and it comes from the White House. If you don't like a law, ignore it. No surprise that other agencies are doing the same thing. EPA is hurting, EPA is hurting energy production in this country, not something we should be doing at this time. And, and Rick, there is a real pattern of abuse here, is there not? Not necessarily. Look, we, we've got to keep in mind, there's an allegation that's been made. If the allegation uh, turns out to be true, something to be concerned about, to be sure. But this, this office that this, uh, this person is suggesting is behaving incorrectly, been around a long time, didn't come along with this administration. Why don't we wait and see what the, what the evidence shows? Let's not be a kangaroo well, court. Well, Kerry, our job is to investigate. We are not a court. We are the media. What Look at the, have you excuse me, Rick, I got to say, the Washington Post investigated before all the evidence is in on Watergate. You weren't against that investigation, no, were just, you? I'm not. And by the way, if you have evidence, I'm very interested to hear it. The we're Washington not Post went where there is smoke, Kerry, there is very oh. often fire. And it is our job, and I know Rick was in favor of what the Washington Post did with Watergate. It is our job to investigate. There's I a lot 12. of smoke I here. Is there not Kerry? Oh, I think there's more than smoke. I think there's fire. And the, the scary thing is that the inspector general is having trouble doing his own investigations because of what's happening at the EPA. I mean, this is the same agency that gave a million dollars to a guy who was pretending to be a CIA agent in Pakistan. Like, you can't make this stuff up. Right. It's terrible. You know, I think, I think one way we could solve all of this is to move the agencies to the communities where they are regulating. So let's move the EPA, for example, to West Virginia. <laughs> oh, that's let's not a bad idea. Well, to EMAC, Iowa. EMAC, the fact is there are a lot of bunch of abuses that apparently went on here, including employees getting paid for a couple of years after they had actually left work at their regular pay schedule. And we should mention, by the way, the inspector general, it came from the office, all of these charges. The inspector general here was appointed in 2010 by guess who? President Obama. So yeah. you can't accuse him of being a Republican. Well, he, the inspector general himself called this a rogue unit that is stymieing his investigation into John Beale, the EPA official, who thought he was a secret agent, you know, man, James Bond guy, CIA guy. When he was an EPA official, he blew $900,000 a tax for money. The IG is there to, is the sheriff boots on the ground to stop taxpayer uh, abuse, meaning waste, fraud, and abuse. That porn guy, by the way, was watching porn since 2010 for up to six hours. So the, the problem with the whole IG model, though, is they, re they rely for their budgets on the agencies themselves. So that is they're so dangerous to them because they can be politicized as well. And Sabrina, what's, what's upsetting to me and what's worrisome to me is that they were using a cloak of national security in order to put off the investigators. They're saying, you can't go in here. I'm wondering what the heck is it they were looking at? That's right. I mean, look, this is just another example of the regulatory state being used as a, as a political pawn, right? And I, I'm coming at it from being down here in Washington. I'm seeing all of these tourists begin to come to, to the capital to, to see all the sites. But I think that it sort of puts into sharp relief just how dangerous our regulatory state is, whether we're talking about the IRS or... EPA, the fact is we, this government largesse has serious uh, political ramifications. Well, that's a great point. And John Tamney, the fact is there are five agencies or departments who have now had serious problems with their inspector generals. Homeland Security, uh, the Defense Department, here we have EPA, the Commerce Department actually had trouble with their uh, inspector general as well. And, and again, the IRS, where the administration was attacking Russell George, the, the IG there, uh, because of what he found. So five instances, they're trying to go around these IGs. Well, I think the problem here is the obnoxious conceit that is regulation to begin with. We are asking the people who could get, not get jobs in certain industries to regulate those who could, and that's why it never works. It's, it's worse than a problem. And more broadly, we have to remind ourselves that a lot of these regulatory bodies were created as a barrier to entry to protect industries from new entrants. Right. And so when you look at energy, you say the problem with re energy regulation is that it keeps out the innovators. So, Silicon 
Silicon Valley is not regulated, and that's why new entrants can always can come in. It's a source of innovation. Regulate, regulated industries are the opposite of well, that. So you've a, got to get rid of them because you want to grow. Point. But the fact that we have them now, Steve, the only thing that stops them entirely from being rogue, rogue agencies are these inspectors general, and now the administration is trying to go around them. That's right, and that's uh, the whole thing about uh, checks and balances in the government, not talking fiscally, but what our founders wanted. Right. They were fearful of an executive having too much power. And you see it here. They're subverting all the uh, checks on their power, making up laws that go along. If they don't like it, they ignore it. No one's accountable. So we have runaway government. That's not what our founders wanted. I have never seen executive power like this. Thank you very much, gang. Well, drivers, beware. Somebody wants to hit you with a brand new tax when you hit the road. That's on cashing in, but first, right here, the nation's chief central banker says, well, inflation, it's not a problem, but we think it is, and we have proof that it's already taking a big bite out of family budgets. Everything is much more expensive, and my son eats a lot. It's just, um, you know, ridiculous how much all the prices have gone up. Food just costs too damn much.